Hello my soccer universe, the storm clouds outside seem an appropriate setting for this video. I decided to address the second uh, bombshell that hit my personal world last Tuesday right after finishing up the video on the Austrian-German Bundesliga. Just to set you the scene, I have it all set up. Um, I took a full purpose for upload. I took a small rest, I got up again. I scroll on, on my phone, I first read that last coach Cooper got fired, which uh, was a shock, but on the other side, I think it was not as much of a dumpster fire as what I'm talking about now. And then within two minutes, I read Paolo Maldini was fired by Milan. <laughs> now, it, full disclosure, it didn't come as a full surprise. It did not come as a full surprise. However, Taking the club icon, and I repeat myself, taking out the club icon, where not only he, he alone is probably the most legendary player in Milan's history. He is from the city of Milan. He grew up here. His father was at the club. His boys have been playing at the club, and, and the younger one is still associated with the club. He is Milan. Yes, there are other legends that are still around, like uh, Baresi. I'll come to him uh, in, in a little bit, who is the vice president, who is, is an equally important figure for Milan. However, the presence that Paolo Maldini has had uh, was always there. And no, uh, Gianni Rivera, um, yes, he was also by Berlusconi in, in, in a way. He is probably the only other figure that I can think of that has the status, status of uh, Paolo Maldini. But he's not in the picture anymore. And it comes also that, you know, not only is he 100, he is Milan. He was also very much involved with this team, with building his team. And we are still, as Milan fans, we are still super grateful for the title that Milan won last season. And the overarching story is that, yes, while Maldini had to learn on the job, he is a smart and charismatic, char charismatic, not charismatic, charismatic guy enough that he could learn on, on this job and you could see a growing curve and especially uh, at, 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 at the beginning with the players that he brought in and I'm talking Teo Hernandez, I'm talking Rafa Leao, I'm talking Tomori uh, and uh, others as well. He brought them here. Teo Hernandez came because he, he idolized Maldini. He got many transfers over the line because there is a Paolo Maldini a name that still throws around a lot of weight in the world of soccer. Calling you personally, we want you to play for my club. And even if he's not the owner, he is the one person that really can claim it is my club. On top of that, he is a guy who was very much involved in the day to day. He was with the squad. He was a reference point for the squad. He was, they were always there training. I don't know how much this annoyed Pro Pioli, but this was a totally, it was a team effort, more, more or less. You had Pioli uh, doing the tactics and probably the main trade train, but you had always Maldini and his uh, companion Massara there to be involved with the squad in a day-to-day -day activity. I also think it's down to Maldini that Zlatan Ibrahimovic, where you, where you can see the two are relatively close. They understand each other. I mean, uh, there are not many players that I would say... Uh, Slatan is at least considering an equal. Paolo Maldini is one of them. The other one would be, of course, uh, the, uh, the great Ronaldo. Let's call him the great Ronaldo. The other one is still an imposter and this should only be called Cristiano. It is what it is. And yes, I will talk about a few. His uh, tenure, especially I would say the last summer window, uh, definitely strike against him. And I understand that ownership was not happy about his outspokenness and about the charisma that he actually projects. Because uh, Redbird, who, who, who came in, they wanted to do it all, you know, kind of the money ball way. Um, if you have a Maldini, who is very opinionated, who wants to have more power, 
it's really really hard to get along there and this is where it actually i think it it, it broke i mean it was when uh the takeover came and after the scudetto i mean throw yourself back here milan had just run a scudetto everything was yay and then Maldini comes out with an interview shortly thereafter that he feels disrespected because no one even have talked about his contract extension. And that took love forever and actually cost Milan an entire month where you could have built on the squad. And this is the one thing that this squad that won the Scudetto was good, but it needed strengthening because you lost an important key player in Cassier and there were other areas that definitely needed to be addressed. And then, yes, they had two months, and uh, but whoever came, came in at the time, it seemed like a good signings, but almost none of them have worked out. And on addition, what um, Cardinale, the new, um, the new uh, big boy at Milan, owner, I don't want to say owner because Redbird Kaka Capital, but he's, he's the CEO of that one. The other thing that he would like, I mean, the one way to increase your transfer budget is to have sales and they have let walk some players that they could not renew, like a Hakan, like a Donnarumma, like a Cassier, uh, and, and so they could have gotten a whole lot of money for them. That is the second strike against Maldini. That definitely was a second strike again. And now uh, the other thing is that Maldini actually wanted to add to the squad a little bit more experience, to have a mixture between youth and experience. And Redbird kind of wants to go really the young model, a little bit the Red Bull model, I would say. And um, yeah, there also friction there. And I read also, although I cannot quite believe it, that Maldini, in, uh, once they got eliminated from the Champions League, he basically took a dig at Pioli and saying, you know, tactically we have still not found a way uh, to beat Inter. It was not even competitive. And there were rumors that he wanted to replace Pioli with his buddy Pirlo, which honestly would have been a rather contentious move in many ways. First of all, I know that the Milan fan base, many of them say Pioli out. I actually, I actually think Pioli has to be given even more, has to be given a lot of credit and he has now a lot more power than he had had before. This is a, a coach that uh, got a squad to a championship that was nowhere. And even this season, yes, they had a, the blip in January, they had a blip in, uh, in March. But he always found the solutions. Uh, yes, you could say maybe he could have a uh, little bit uh, put on a few more of the more uh, younger players. He always seemed to rely on the same, same as he did. He didn't even really give them a chance, but I guess he was also fighting a little bit for his own life. But he's still with a rather limited squad. And yes, top four was only achieved because Juventus got punished. And I think this is also um, a condition that has to be uh, set that Milan were not the fourth best team just by points. They beat Juventus twice, which makes me feel way more comfortable Milan going to the Champions League. Yeah, I, I, I think you events don't have much to uh, complain about there because beating you twice, no. Well, it's also something that the owners look, 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 looked at and so, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I have to say, Pioli did actually a much better job. I think it's an underappreciated job of what he did this season, honestly. And so, yeah, in this interview, Tukatitika Pioli said we need more investment, basically stated his own position, maybe overvalued the season if they finish top four with an eight of them, which was a little bit too much. And right after Slatan was senseless and off the next day after they met with uh, Cardinal and Cardinal said, bye bye Maldini. And it hurts. That they couldn't find another way to keep him somehow around. Hurts. I know there were already some troubles brewing, and they didn't get get along. And I, in a cutthroat world, like this is a, a company that wants to make money. And yeah, the results delivered were not there because the transfer market was non-existent. You had uh, you uh, invested 55 million, didn't go much uh, anywhere. Uh, with all this investment, you hung on by luck to a fourth place. Uh, yes, you made the Champions League final, which put in a little bit of money. But overall, I have to say the last year was not a good one for uh, the club leadership in Maldini and Massara. 
And I guess they just took the cold hard facts and said, yeah, now we're the bosses here. You may be a legend, you're out. However, uh, it is something that you simply, with a man that is the club. It's a really, really rough move. It's a really, really rough move, move and a, a hard pill to swallow. And I don't know. I mean, the only legend left at the club is Baresi, but Baresi, I always felt, was much less outspoken and much less out there. I mean, the one thing I always admire about Amal Bamaldini is he's, um, he is not holding back. He has his own op opinion and he wants to get his way. He wants to get it his way. Great qualities. In addition, uh, and in, in, in addition, he's not towing the comp, comp the line if he's he, he, if he thinks this is not the right thing to do. Those are all great qualities, but those are the qualities that got him in the end fired. And to me, those worlds, Maldini fired from Milan, just uh, don't, don't sound right. What it also means to me is, uh, yes, now Moncada and Furlani take over together with Pioli. Moncada being this uh, magician on the scouting market, uh, Furlani being a uh, very savvy on the business end, but none of them have ever negotiated contracts. Pioli will have to save all he needs, and now let's see what they will do. Um, from the Milan fan base, I can tell you right now, the pressure is on. You fired our idol. And yes, the Ultras are probably not even that close with Mal Maldini, uh, which is also something I do like. I, I hated his goodbye, but the Ultras are not so close, but they recognize that he's the man. He's the man. And he's not going to be swayed by anyone else but his own convictions. But they recognize that he represents everything Rosso Nero. Everything. Now he's gone. Now you guys have to deliver. And that's what I'm going to say. You guys have to deliver. Don't mess with this club. I, as always, I mean, the, uh, the jerk, uh, you know, the quick reaction would be get those guys out. I want those owners out. No, I actually want to see. I, want, I give them the year. I want to see what you're doing. I want to see. I want to call your bluff. I want to see it. And if you deliver, bravo on you. I'm, I'm going to give you that chance. But you have you have a big minus on your record already. And at the moment, the only thing that goes for the ownership is that they're pushing hard for Milan's own stadium. I want to see good investment in the squad. One level or other. If it's a young squad or whatever, I want to see that they take care that the squad has, uh, has, has improved. I also hope that there is enough to keep the players that were so attached to Maldini to keep those satisfied. Because I hear rumors, I don't know, no, no one has, uh, I mean, I read it, not 100% sure, but the Theo Nandos, Mike Menno, yes, this was probably the king signing by Maldini, Theo Nandos. Mike Menno and Rafa Leao are really, really hurt because they looked up to that guy. But it seems so convenient. You get Slatan out, and now you get Maldini out. Again, I think Maldini's leadership was overall a positive. He brought Milan to the top again. With a good strategy to boost. Yeah, that is fine. It was not perfect. Uh, the transfer market was always a little bit off a mess, especially if you read the players that have been linked with Milan. I'm just saying uh, Julian Alvarez, that they could not get over the line. Or with some of, they were always looking at the right players, but they didn't come. Or the whole uh, Botman disaster, who uh, Milan would have needed badly. They did, not, they did not perform well in the transfer market. And that was always the negative. However, squad building wise and so on, I think they did overall a pretty good job. So again, thank Grazio Paolo. I feel with you. Uh, this hurts tremendously. You have, I always said you have been my favorite player and I was so happy to see you back at the club. It's just something to hold on to as a Milan fan. However, show me. Redbird, show me. I really wanna want you to show me. And I hope that there will come a time when the Maldini can come back to the club. 
But this is the cold world of business that is taking over and I hope it's a successful way. Because ultimately that's the only thing that I really care about. I care about the values and, and it's about what I care most about is that this Milan team is successful. Winning a championship, that's more the 20th one before Inter. This is for me the most important thing. And making more good runs in the Champions League. Not necessarily yet winning. I, at this moment, I want to win mostly domestic titles and have good showings in the Champions League. That's all I'm asking for. And prevent Inter from getting the 20th Scudetto first. That's, that's the call. That's the task. You take over. In any case, please let me know your thoughts on the whole to 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 topic. I'm still a little bit in disbelief. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed my little rant. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.